What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another Indie Investor Pod, the podcast where we just like to talk about indie real estate investing, um, just tips, tricks, anything just to help out anybody that's investing here in Indianapolis. You know, our heart is with education and just helping people in any way that we can. Um, today, I got an exciting guest with me here today talking about hard money. Um, so something that is definitely something that anybody can gravitate towards if you are investing in indie. Um, if you're new, if you're seasoned, whatever you may be, um, this might be an episode that you might want to tune into just to get the tips on how to best invest with hard money here in Indianapolis. And with that, let's get on with the show. All right, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Indie Investor Pod. I have Cherie Hansel here with me, just excited to talk about hard money. As, as we're like prepping for this, she's just like, yeah, I can talk for hours about how hard money. It's, it's, it's my life, and I, I understand it. So that's, that's what I am about anything, you know, real estate. Like, yeah, just throw out a topic, and let's just go with it and stuff. So thank you so much for joining me here today, and just appreciate you. And I, I, we've done some deals with you here in Indianapolis, and it's always good to see you at Cyria and things like that. So you're with Longhorn Investments, but just kind of let's give us a little bit about kind of your background of how you got teamed up with Longhorn and kind of how you got into just being able to talk about hard money for hours. Sure. So um, thank you for having me. Um, I got started with Longhorn in sort of a, it's a funny kind of story, but uh, my mom and I are investors. Um, we've been partners for maybe seven years now. Um, I, I went to a lot of the Cyria events looking for, you know, just sort of a, a way in just to immerse myself in real estate. So um, John Shipley, who used to work with Longhorn, was looking for a someone to work for them to, to explain hard money and to, to get deals rolling, to get the people in to, to get funding, you know, looking for people who are looking for funding pretty much. So um, that's kind of how we got connected. And I started with him back in 2017 and it's been crazy and awesome and fun and super educational since then. So awesome. What kind of investments are, are you, are you involved in on the, on the personal side? Um, mostly flips. Okay. I, I've done a couple of rentals, but flips is really where I, I focus. Nice. Awesome. So, all right. And so today we're going to kind of be focusing on hard money because that's, that's the world that you live in right now. And I think, I think a lot of our listeners are going to gravitate towards this because it's something they can definitely use, whether they're um, just using it for flip projects or they're going to burr or they're going to do anything like that. Definitely right in your wheelhouse of, of things they can do. Um, so if you can just kind of give us a little quick, like kind of just a, you know, a brief summary or a synopsis when people hear, hard money what does that really mean and what does what what can what does it yeah i guess that's it just what's a quick little definition for hard money sure so um i guess if we're going to compare to traditional mortgages hard money is based on the hard assets of the property so we're looking very little at your experience at your uh, we'll, we'll look at base statements but we won't look at taxes which a traditional mortgage lender would look at uh, so basically we really are looking at the property itself we're making sure it's a good deal and so the way that we structure the loan is we base it off the appraised value of the property. We send an appraiser out. So hard money, hard asset, which is the property. Yeah. So awesome. Um, so let's talk about, let's just talk about maybe the different ways that investors can use hard money for, for their investments here in Indianapolis. Sure. So um, basically we fund the purchase and the rehab cost uh, flips and for buy and holds or rentals. Um, the only difference between a flip and a rental for us is that you're going to refi once you're, uh, once you're ready to, uh, well, to, to get into a rate and term or a cash out refi just for that lower interest, longer term loan. Yeah. So awesome. So let's, let's kind of take a look at um, what does that really, and you, I know you can specifically, you know, talk about your company specifically with Longhorn and things like that. And let's, we can kind of look at their numbers, maybe if you don't mind sharing, but like, what does that look like? So if somebody wants to use hard money of kind of what are some terms maybe that like that people should maybe some general terms of like what people could use for hard money like how much are they are they expected to put down or how much are you guys willing to fund that type of stuff sure so typically we want to we want to fund 100 percent of cost so we base it on the after repair value we lend up to 65 percent of the after repair value which potentially and usually is 100 percent of cost so that's your purchase and your rehab and the benefit of that really is to leverage your capital you need to have money in the bank to start a money deal to pay your closing so you'd be responsible with our with our loan program you'd be responsible for your closing costs your appraisal um, and then points and interest 
that's a pretty good deal, I'd say. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's uh, you know, especially for just uh, and I love you know I know I you know I like all the times I kind of refer you know a lot of newbies over to you guys as well. I'm just like hey, check out what they have and things like that. And I think it's just a great thing. I think you guys do a great job of walking people through all those steps and everything you need to be careful of. of those things of like a lot of times people, especially when they're starting off, they don't think like oh yeah, there's another you know a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred for closing cost or whatever there may be. They don't factor that into their numbers all the time and stuff like that. But you guys are walking them through them and really helping them out with that. So that's awesome. Um, you know, and just and just all the so how much like if somebody is going through that process with you, how much are they involved in that of really seeing kind of like, hey, where are you guys coming up with your numbers and how does this really look? And you know, so when you're coming up sixty five percent of ARV, how did you guys arrive to that? Do you guys go through all those steps with them um, to help them understand kind of all that? I do. Yes. So I have um, sort of a a spreadsheet that I use to calculate um, your cash to close, your monthly payment based on your your purchase price, your rehab estimate, and your estimated ARV or your after repair value. So I I do try to make it as hands-on as possible. And I want to make sure that everybody's comfortable with the process because we don't want to hide our fees. We want to make sure that you are accounting for every dollar as much as possible on that deal so that you, you can be prepared and then smooth sailing from there yeah so awesome um so what are what are some maybe uh just some let's kind of focus a little bit more on maybe those people that are just starting off um just because we've kind of mentioned that and stuff Uh, so what are some tips that you have for those people that are you know just starting to look into like hey that they watched hdtv and they're ready to go out and start flipping their house because you know they can get done in 30 seconds or 30 minutes and stuff you know which definitely isn't the case and people have those misconceptions but when that newbie comes to you and says hey, you know, I'm ready to, I'm looking for a flip property. I want to take on this flip, you know, kind of things like that. So what are some things that you can, you guys maybe kind of want to make people aware of like, hey, let's, let's be careful of this. So here's some tips you need to look out for. Um, what are some stuff that you, maybe this is advice you have for that? Sure. Um, well, first of all, definitely have more than one contractor looking at the property. You want to get more than one estimate because yeah, sure. It sounds amazing having a very cheap, a rehab estimate from a contractor, but that could, that could be problematic later on because you didn't account for anything that came up um, that wasn't seen at the initial uh, inspection with your, your contractor. So definitely get more than one set of eyes on the property that you're looking at because it could be very costly in the process. You could end up getting stuck in a, in a property because you can't keep moving forward because you run out of funds. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a big thing. Um, that's something that I always, you know, I'm just kind of, you know, telling people right off the bat of, you know, all, us on our side where we have people that are always coming to us to, you know, buy our properties and things. They might send one contractor through and be like, oh, their numbers were, you know, yeah. were this too high. I'm like, well, did you have any contractors did you send through? You know, you want to get a couple of different estimates, a couple of different just ideas too of what people are thinking of like, hey, you should, I, you know, yeah. some, some contractors like, oh, you should, you know, you should do this or you're going to need to do this. And then another country like, Oh no, I can just fix this. And I can, you know, there's gonna be some things that you, that you just having more contracts out and take a look can definitely just open up your eyes or just open up, you know, when it comes For to sure. the too, um, open up the spreadsheets, I guess a little bit more of, of really what's going on. So, so okay. let's, let's kind of, let's go into that um, a little bit of, so when you have that situation, maybe pop up of somebody's numbers were this and they're into a project now, but then something else pops up. Like, how does that, you know, how do you guys work with them? How does that, how do you, how does that kind of go about? Um, what are some ways that maybe the homeowner or you guys kind of work back and forth to, um, I guess, come to a solution for that, for that problem? Honestly, it happens yeah. and, and it, you know, it could be devastating um, yeah, at first, but we, as a company, you know, we're all investors, we're all experienced and we're all humans. So um, when we get that initial rehab bid from you and we lock you into that amount, we can work with you. Um, we can borrow from other line items in your bid. Um, we could help you find someone that can do that additional work for cheap. Like I, I'm a great referral source. I'm a member of Cyria Fortune Builders. If you are ever missing a piece to the puzzle, I can most likely help you find it. Because I've, I've done umpteen deals each month and I know who works and I, I know who doesn't. Yeah. So no, awesome. Um, so let's talk about, um, you know, whether they're new or whether they're seasoned, whoever, just like, I'm sure you see people like basically bring properties to you and bring numbers to you that you're like, 
what is this? What does this mean? <laughs> it's always like one of my favorite like conversations to have with like title companies. Like what's like the ran most random thing that people like brought a deal to you on or like what's their contract look like? But I'm sure you see stuff too of like where people will send you over properties of, like, hey, I just wanna, here's, a, here's the address, I wanna lend on this. Like what are, wh when it comes to that, like what are some things I guess people can do to make kind of that process smooth? Of what do they need to have in order to, you know, basically to bring to you, to send to you so they can go ahead and get that process underway? So um, one thing I do want to mention with, with rehabs, um, we do typically want, as, as a company, as a lender, we do want to see half of the rehab amount in reserves because we want to make sure you can close the deal and start the rehab. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the time, um, well, one of the big things that I've seen is that an investor will submit a deal to me and it'll be like a $100,000 rehab, which it, it's a lot. It's a, it's a high end, high risk investment already. Um, but they don't have, you know, $50,000 in the bank. So, you know, I have to question, I have to say, all right, well, what, what is your plan in case something goes awry and, and you have to come up with extra funds? Like, how are you going to get that cash? And that's usually, unfortunately, it's what kills a deal usually because we can't approve such a deal without seeing money in the bank first. So. Yeah. So what are those things that really people like, if, if people want to send you a deal and work with you on that, are they, do you need to see like, hey, here's the address, here are, here are where my numbers are, here are where the contractor's numbers are right from the start? Or is it like, hey, let's, let's kind of, like, guess what is, like, kind of what are the steps that somebody needs to go through to kind of just even start that process of, of, of getting a hard money lender? Oh, yeah. So we do want to see, we want to get you pre-approved, first of all. Um, we want to see credit 650 uh, minimum score, and then we want to see money in the bank. So that's the first two big things. Um, secondly, we'd want to see your rehab bid. We'd want to see wouldn't know the address, we want all the deal information that you can really gather for us. Um, and then that way we can you know, better analyze the deal and see if it's a good fit. I, it's very rare that a deal is submitted to me in a, like, in a war zone, I guess, is it, as you'd say. Um, a lot of these areas are really up and coming. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty familiar with the area at this point. Yeah. So no, that's good. Um, so then when, uh, what are, have you, I just have to ask this since I even mentioned it and things, but like, what's, what's like kind of the most random, like somebody, like is somebody, somebody like, is it that where people, somebody can just like really just send you like the address and be like, Hey, I need fun for this. Or is everybody pretty much like, what, yeah. what's, what's, what's a crazy story about that? Or there's kind of an odd story that you're just kind of like, um, what's going on? Uh, well, it's, it's mainly just, um, they don't know how much work needs to go into the deal. So they'll send me like 135,000 to $150,000 purchase. Uh, and then the R will be like 200 and they want to do like a hundred thousand dollars worth of work. Maybe like that's what they're estimating. And it's like, well, have you crunched the numbers yet? Because there's really no profit in there for you. And, and you'll have to bring a lot of money to the table. Cause like, as I stated before, we lend based on the after repair value. So we lend up to 65% of that 200,000, which I believe is 130,000. So that wouldn't even really cover your purchase. Right. Right. Um, no, that's, that's good. So like I said, I'm sure you see all kinds of stuff at, at times and things, but <laughs> yeah. Um, that's, that's part of the fun as investors of, of being in this. I'm just like, there's like, we always say like, every time I think I'm around like good investors, we always talk like, oh man, we should keep a notebook of all the stories we have or any of that. Stuff. So I said the same thing as a teacher actually. So, <laughs> um, no, that's great. Um, so what are, what are some of the mistakes that you maybe see investors, investors make? Um, um, and that could be, let's kind of take this in two different things. Like maybe, maybe I guess a two part question of what are some, some of those mistakes that you see investors make? Um, other than the ones that we maybe mentioned as they're getting ready to work on a deal or bring a deal to a hard money lender. Um, and then maybe the second part is, is like kind of during the process of maybe some mistakes that you see some people making. So let's, let's take it the, the first part. So before, as they're looking to get this deal funded um, through you guys or another hard money lender thing, what are some mistakes that maybe you see pop up that people need to be aware of? Oh boy. Um, there's so many. Let's see. Well, I would say honestly not having let's say you wanted to close an LLC on your deal and um, it, you, you need to close quickly. You need to close Friday. Yeah. I need all of those LLD, LLC documents um, from you from the state of Indiana. And most people don't have them off hand. And, you know, of course with the pandemic craziness, it's not easy to get all that paperwork. Yeah. So that, that's something I've seen kind of kill a deal. Um, and then just not having a good understanding of what you need to do on the property. 
Like you're like, let's, for instance, a very simplified scope of work for what you're going to do on the rehab. Um, like just saying remodeling kitchen. Well, we need to know what you're going to do to the kitchen. We need to know if you're going to do flooring, paint, appliances, plumbing, electric. We need to know everything that needs to be done. That way, when we send an inspector out, we can approve your funds. That way we know exactly what you're doing. Right. So a lot of the time it's just not being a hundred percent, you know, on the same page, you know, knowing what you're going to be doing to that property. Yeah. So no, that makes a lot of sense. I can definitely see some mistakes popping up there. Um, so let's take the other side of it. Once, you know, kind of a deal gets, it gets, gets funded and gets, you know, you guys are lending on things like that. What are some mistakes that maybe an investor might kind of do? Is it like, I'm sure they, Always, they might come up with changing their mind is probably maybe a big one or something like that. But what are some mistakes that people need to be aware of that they might not even know? Like they're thinking like, oh, I'm going through this process. I'm, I'm going to be good. I'm going to get this done. But maybe it's something that's something that they do that is just like, hey, let's let's not do that. Be careful with that. Or what are you doing? That kind of, that kind of thing. So it, uh, my example doesn't really have much to do with the current loan that they might have with us. It's really um, I've, I've had a few investors that will have a deal funded with us and you know they're impatient they want to you know take the moon and they will you know they want to lasso it and bring it to you know but um, a lot of times they'll go out and they'll start buying other properties to do work on those and so they're over leveraged and so no deal really gets completed in time so they're spending more and more money on their hard money loans or their private money loans and so they kind of get stuck and that's happened a lot, unfortunately. And, and that's why we do want to see half of the rehab amount in reserves. We want to make sure that you are in a good place and that everything is straight away, all the money is accounted for, and that you are set up for success. Yeah. So, yeah, that's something that, you know, I'm sure it happens, you know, quite often that people like, they just get excited about it. Like, oh, this is going well. Let me go ahead and start a new one or do another. Like, yeah, I can definitely see that happening. So that's, that's, a, that's a great tip there. Um, how about, um, so through this, and you mentioned before, especially with, you know, the COVID and Corona and just kind of all the stuff that's going on in the last, you know, the last few months, um, you know, I'm talking to a lot of people nationally too. They've kind of been like, hey, we're just, we're not, we're not approving deals like with hard money lenders. Um, I've heard people say that and things. Um, I know you guys have like been, you guys have still been doing deals throughout this entire thing, but have you guys seen, um, have you guys, what, what impact, I guess, has Corona and all the, all the stuff have, had been on your, on your guys' business um, or just some things that you have even changed or had to be more careful of or anything like that? Yeah, honestly, we have not, as a company, we have not seen a difference. In fact, I've, this has been my biggest month so far. I've seen so many deals. Like people are, they're still buying. You know, I think they're taking advantage of, unfortunately, of, of the fear, you know, surrounding the pandemic, surrounding the market and, so a lot of people are buying now and they're trying to get those rehabs now because as I stated, like people are still buying, homeowners are still looking. Um, you know, the, the market has not crashed. It, it's thriving. Yeah. Um, but as far as like a, a lender difference, I have noticed that a lot of lenders are not lending. And if they are lending, they're being very careful and they're analyzing the deal a little closer just to make sure that it's, you know, not outside of the box. It's a cookie cutter deal. It's a, you know, win-win for everybody. Um, so I know that, you know, we made one change, you know, we, we did lend up to 70% of the after fair value for, for like, since we've been, you know, in business since 2008. Um, but we did, we reduced that to 65% of after fair value. It has not made a huge difference for us. Like, like I said, we've had a very big month. This month. Yeah. It's been, it's been kind of crazy of like where honestly, Indy, and this is, this is the great thing. This is why I love Indy. It's like, it's one of those things of like, as far as real estate goes, like we were all, we were waiting for it. Like I was like adjusting my prices, like oh, my buy price is going to get them down like five, 10%. I lost, I lost deals because I tried to adjust my numbers like too soon. Dude. Like now I'm like, man, let's just go ahead and like keep buying. And, and people are buying all over Indianapolis right now. Um, and it's, it's great time to invest in Indianapolis, even, even through this and stuff. And Right now, it's, it's, it's a little tricky because actually inventory is a little bit low. Um, from everybody I've talked to, inventory is a little low. No, not many people are um, kind of selling. We'll kind of see what happens when it comes out of, you know, when all the, um, I guess, the forbearance and the foreclosures and evictions all that kind of opens back up. We'll see what happens then. But right now, there's, I feel like inventory is a little bit low in Indianapolis. So 
um, hearing, you know, you even say that too, of like, Hey, you have, you've been having like some, some big months and doing a lot of projects and things, which is, which is awesome. Um, cause that's, like I said, that's what I love about India of like really, it's such a great market to invest in. And this is just one more reason and one more example of why that is. Um, I do want to ask you though, cause I know you guys are in different States. Have you guys seen like a difference of what you're able to do here in Indianapolis as the rep here versus maybe one of the other States in Texas or somewhere else that, have they had to change their parameters or do anything different with like basically Indy's like, yeah, I'm kicking your guys' butt because it's awesome. <laughs> no, actually straight across the board in all markets, we have seen like just, it's been a wild ride. I have to yeah. say like we've all been super busy with new deals because like I said, most of the, the lenders that these investors are going with, they're not lending right now. So they're looking for other funding. So we're kind of like the cool girl in school, you know, we're, we're here, we're still kicking it. You know, we've got great rates. Um, our customer service is awesome. Like we're very, we're very quick still. Like we have not had any delays in inspections, appraisals, underwriting, even title has been kicking it. it it's been, like I said, it's been pretty wild. <laughs> awesome. So no, that's, that, that's great to hear. Um, just as far as, you know, for, for Indian and for other markets as well, but just as far as hearing that, like I said, I know a lot of people that are kind of having to go with private money or even, you know, trying to get conventional money, which is even tightened up a little bit and stuff too. So it's great to hear that, you know, there's some you guys and, you know, hard money is, is something they can definitely look out for as well. So I mean, some of these projects go on, so I love it. Um, so how about, um, can you share with, um, can you share with us maybe just like a success story that you've had of like where an investor comes in with a project of kind of just taking us through the steps of one, there's like, man, this, this is, this is like on paper. This is, this is awesome. This is great. It was great for us. It was great for the investor kind of across the board, kind of a success story that you can maybe share with us. Yeah, um, so this one was pretty recent. It was this year. We funded it in January um, of this year, and um, let me get the numbers pulled up here. So this was actually an out-of-state investor. He's based out of California. Um, so all of you out-of-state investors, this is pretty inspiring. So uh, originally, we, we funded 100% of cost. The numbers on the deal were as follows. He purchased for 53000 He put, originally, it, the scope was for nineteen five. dollars um, He did have to go over budget by $6,000. Um, so all in, he was at $78,000. Um, like I said, the, we, we funded 100% of cost. After repair value was $128,000. Um, he refied back in April um, for $78,000 to pay off Longhorn and to wrap in closing costs at a 3.7, I think it was, yeah, 3.75%, 30, 30 year fixed. Um, so I think all in total cash invested was 10 to 12,000 and that's including the 6,000 he went over budget. Nice, that's awesome. So yeah, that's great. So I, love, I just love stories like that. Yeah, thanks for breaking it down for us. So that's, that, that's sure, awesome. Sure. Um, a lot of moving stuff. pieces to that one. <laughs> What's that? Uh, there were a lot of moving pieces of that when he actually did a case study that he posted on Facebook. So I think uh, I might post that on my Facebook just so everybody can see it. It was really a really quick deal and he was very open minded and he had a great team on his side. Everybody here locally that was helping him. They were amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. No, is, that, is that the case study you sent me yesterday? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll make sure that gets, you know, it gets posted along with this uh, podcast and everything too. So no, good stuff. Um, let me ask you, that investor that you worked with on that deal, were they, were they new? Were they seasoned? Like kind of what was their experience level um, along with that? They were brand new. They had never done a deal. <laughs> yep. So he's based out of California, out of state investor. So not from Indiana. Um, he set up his whole team from his home pretty much and was very successful. Yeah. So good stuff. No, thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Um, so we're, 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 we're running out, we're running kind of, um, to the, to the limit on time here a little bit. So now we're going to show we've got time for a, a little bit, but what about, um, I just kind of, I'll put this out here real quick too, kind of a little open-ended, but do you have any other last like little, little tips or little pieces of advice that you could, that you give that we haven't kind of gone over or, or talked about today? I do. Um, I've got a, a few, uh, definitely build your team, find a real estate investor friendly realtor, uh, to help you look for your deals, get familiar with your local wholesalers, show up or dial into your SIREA or INRIA or local RIA meetings, because that's a lot of just 
amazing information and it's a lot of information and it's all by experienced investors, people who've done deals. Um, definitely ask questions over and over and over again until you are comfortable with the process and always have a backup exit plan. So if you're looking to flip a deal, see if you, you can refi, see if it makes sense to do rental, you know, maybe wholesale it. You know, there are so many different creative ways of making money in this business. There should be at least three exit plans to your deal. No, that's awesome. That's, that's, that's great advice right there. The different exit strategies and just going into the deal and making sure you have, you, you are aware of what else you can do with it. If something goes, something goes crazy or Corona hits and you might have to do something to, to switch up your strategy or something like that. So I also love the fact that you threw in there, like ask questions. Like I, it's so important whether you're, you know, whether it's to the people that are bringing you deals or, or to the lenders, like I'm going to, you know, it's, I, I, I kind of, I kind of worry about that sometimes when I talk to investors of like, you know, I ask them like where a fee came from. I'm like, Oh, I don't know. That's just, that's their standard thing. I'm like, well, what is it? What's it for? What's it mean? And things like that. So make sure you're asking questions, make sure you're just in the know on everything that's going on. Of, even if it's Absolutely. from us. So like on your, on your HUD of like, Hey, what does this mean? What does this do? Like all that stuff. Um, so just make sure you're asking questions. It's such a great way to be in the know on everything you're doing. So you know what to do on the next one or you're, you're informed or you can save money somewhere. So always good stuff. So no. So Cherie, thank you so much. I really appreciate you and um, kind of what you guys do here in Indy. Um, just, just the, your personality and just everything that you do for, for Cyria and being available for everybody here in Indianapolis as well. So thank you so much for that. Um, if you don't mind, can you give us um, what's the best way for people to reach out to you um, to get in contact with you and uh, just some information about what Longhorn uh, for Longhorn of how they can like check out what's going on with them as well. Yeah, so we do have a website. We're www.longhorninvestments.com. Uh, you can email me or call me. My phone number is 317-599-2741. That is myself. So you can text me, uh, you can call me, or you can email me at shansel at longhorninvestments.com. So awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. So no, really appreciate you. Um, like I said, thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you um, have any information or have any questions for Tree, definitely reach out to her. If you need, if you, you reach out to us and we can make a connection, whatever need to happen. Um, but thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Indie Investor Pod. If you have any suggestions on, hey, Brian, I really want you guys to do an episode on this, or hey, can you cover this again? Or hey, bring Cherie back and let's do a part two because I have these questions. Like anything like that, let us know. We'd love to help you out. That's what the purpose of this podcast is. So thank you very much. Thank you, Cherie. And that's a wrap for this episode of the Indie Investor Pod. Take care.